Hey everyone, and welcome to the podcast for May 4th, may the 4th be with you, of 2021. Uh, as always, I'm Tom Targo, Editor-in-Chief, Avram Pilch, and I'm joined by Associate Editor, Les Pounder, Raspberry Pi expert, Ash Puckett, and today's very special guest, Zach from How Chu. How are you doing, Zach? Hey, good. How are you? Good. So I love your shirt. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, all the different it, Raspberry Pis. It is. They're all, and Ash apparently made this shirt for you, correct? She did, yes. Yep, it's actually the Raspberry Pi 3. It was before the 4 came out, kind of Andy Warhol style. But we're going to make a new shirt soon uh, with uh, updated, so with the 4 on it. So if people are fans of the shirt or how to, can they uh, can they buy this merch? Soon, actually, they will be able to. Um, we have a shop where we sell a couple of cables and we sell like a Raspberry Pi power button, um, but we don't have swag on there yet, but we're gonna add that <laughs> soon. So if you uh, add us on Facebook, we'll announce when it's when it's up. Awesome. For those who, are, uh, who weren't watching last time or for some reason, I don't know why, haven't heard of how to, uh, can you tell us a bit about your site and what you guys do? Sure. Yeah. How to it's H O W C H O O. Um, how to.com is a, uh, how to and DIY site that has a lot of raspberry Pi content on it. Um, we do a lot of retro video gaming, um, you know, newer video games, DIY general how to, but we have hundreds of raspberry Pi guides. You've probably come across one at some point. We have tons of Octoprint guides and retro Pi. Um, kind of just whatever we're interested in is, is how the site started. And then we started kind of blossoming out into other topics. So uh, we also have a YouTube channel if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, I recommend it. We have a Raspberry Pi interest that has all the different guides kind of split up. You can filter by like Octoprint or, um, you know, just different hobby electronics uh, guide components and soldering. Uh, yeah. So it's like a how to and DIY site for makers. Oh, well, will the t-shirt be available for Greece? Sure. Yeah, it's avail it'll be available uh, internationally once we, uh, we release it. Got a question there. Oh, you're muted, Abram. I'm sorry. People all over the world will be wearing this shirt. Yes. Uh, so you have a really cool project that you want to show us today, which is a magic mirror a lot of folks have heard of magic some folks may have heard of magic mirrors but not really know what they're about that seems to be something that people are very interested in when it comes to raspberry pies uh, what is yours like yeah so um just to, to briefly describe what a magic mirror is i'm going to hold it up it looks a little dim because the brightness is turned down on the actual display but it's a it looks like a normal mirror right um you can mount it on the wall and it shows up-to-date information basically using these widgets. And so the Magic Mirror project was started by a guy named uh, Mitch Mitch. I think it's Michael something. And it's been around for years. And what it is, is it's actually a web server running on the Raspberry Pi. And it displays a website just like any other website, except the website is hosted on the Raspberry Pi. And so there are a few different components. There's a two-way mirror, which is actually, this one's removable. Right, which is just a piece of acrylic or glass with a mirror material on both sides so that when you put a light behind it, it looks like it's holographically projecting onto the front. And then if you look at the actual display, it's just a normal screen, ideally an LED screen, right? They work best with a good viewing angle. And then you have the Raspberry Pi inside of it. So this project's actually from a few years ago, and I've made a few different magic mirrors. Um, there's a full guide and, and video in the YouTube video description there if you want to really dig into it. Um, but this one is a Google Home enabled magic mirror. Um, I had to reinstall everything last night since my SD card got corrupted. So you'll have to watch the video for the full functionality. Um, but essentially you just install the magic mirror library and build some sort of frame. Um, this one is actually an all in one unit made by PyTop called the seed. And it has the display and it has like a, the Raspberry Pi holder. And then I bought this mirror material and put magnets on it to affix it to the front to make it easy to just take off. Um, so yeah, but you can build one. I've built, I have a couple of guides too you can check out. I built one that's just a wooden frame on the wall. Um, I built some tiny ones just for fun. So, I mean, really, as long as you can get this two-way mirror material on the display and you install magic, the magic mirror library, then it just, it'll just work. 
So what kind of things can you do with the Magic Mirror library? What sorts of data does it show you? Oh yeah, so everything is kind of module based, which is cool. So you can create, you can do anything you want. So by default, it shows, you know, this like looking good today, just kind of message, it'll cycle through nice messages. Um, it'll show the calendar. So my one in my house is subscribed to the Tampa Bay Rays baseball team calendar. So I know when the games are coming up. Um, it'll show, um, kind of cycle through uh, news sources at the bottom. So you can just see like article titles and you can set which news sources you want. And then my favorite part is the actual weather widget, which shows upcoming days. And let's see if you can see this. Again, it's, it's usually a lot brighter than this. I just uh, haven't configured it fully, but um, so let me see if I can show you. Nope, not quite. There we go. So you can kind of see that weather widget on the corner there. And so it's really nice to have this on the wall of the house and then just go in and, and glance at it and know like, oh, there's the temperature for today. It's gonna be raining the next three days because it's Florida. Uh, and then uh, you can install, I mean, there are hundreds of custom widgets that people have published that you can just go on and you know install it, configure it, and it just kind of works. Wow, that's, yeah. that's real, that is really cool. Um, so, I'm sure you've seen the commercial where people, there's some type, I forget the name of the product, that's like a full body mirror that people use for fitness. Is there a way to do that with the Raspberry Pi? Yeah, um, so here are your limitations, is really cost, right? So um, there are ways to have multiple, so imagine you had a giant full length mirror, right? A two way mirror that size is pretty expensive, but you know, you can make, you can make it work. You can buy glass and you can buy the film and you can cover it yourself, it's a little harder to do, you know, and, and you have to get, it's kind of like tinting a window of a car, you know, so you, if you haven't done that before, maybe it'll take some learning. Like a pre-cut mirror that size, that's either acrylic or glass gets expensive. But imagine having a display that big. Well, how you get around that is you can have individual displays and you can kind of um, use, I can't remember what it's called, maybe you guys know where you can combine multiple displays into one. <sighs> you see the name of that. Uh, if anybody knows, feel free to post in the chat. But you can have like a small one at the top and one in the middle and one at the bottom. And so you'll never really display things in the middle, you know, in these sections, but people won't really know that. They just, you know, use their imagination. So uh, the key here is to use an LED display because it'll have more of a dark black background. And if you have just a normal LCD display, then when it illuminates at night, you'll see, you know, and even cheaper LED displays are like this. I think the best would probably be an OLED, you know, where it's like super black and then you only see, uh, but those commercials, like you can make that yourself for sure. That's that's basically what this is. Yeah. Wow, awesome. That is, that is great. So, uh, so what are some of the other things that uh, you guys have been working on lately at how, that how to that people should check out? Oh, well, we've actually been branching out into um, just some more like consumer, a little bit more consumer, you know, friendly stuff. Like we're always, we're always publishing like Maker and you know Hobby Electronics, Raspberry Pi content. But we're also trying to bring more people in so that we can kind of like get them in, you know, convert them to the hobbyist lifestyle. So um, ever since uh, AirTags, Apple AirTags were released, um, we have a brand new full-time writer who actually. Um, used to work support for Apple years ago. And so she's very familiar with like Apple products. So she's been helping us to like write a lot about how to do cool things with your Apple products, including AirTags, which are on pre-order still. So we're trying to create some guides for um, when people actually get them. Uh, before we even have them ourselves, we can kind of like use our best judgment and, and then revise them. Um, so that's been kind of cool. Uh, we're also working on a, a really big video. It's been actually a, a quite some time since we released our last video. Um, just we've been so busy, but we're working on an arcade cabinet build that's actually going to be a multi-part video that is, it's going to be the highest production quality we've ever done. This is like spending months on a video and seeing what happens just, just to try it, you know, um, so that's exciting. Full-size arcade cabinet build with a Raspberry Pi and Retro Pi. Um, so that's going to be cool when we're done with that. Uh, Tyler from the other, one of the other How To founders is, is working on it right now in California in his garage. So yeah. Wow. Wow. That is, that is impressive because I think a lot of us have, I see one behind you, Pi Cades. Oh yeah. Uh, Mine's not behind me, but it's in the house. I have, oh, I have yeah. one behind, I have one behind so me. So all of us have one. Yeah. I think we, each of us has a Pi Cade and, That's uh, 
that's great. <laughs> but if you could have us have a stand up one, uh, so oh, yeah. Jim uh, CKD asks, is Magic Mirror available through official repos of Raspberry Pi OS? Uh, so um, I can answer this actually because I went and reinstalled everything last night and I am uh, familiarized again with all the different options that are available. So there are uh, several different ways to actually install it. Um, I don't think it's on any of the actual Raspberry Pi Foundation repos, um, but you can, there is an image available, which is just the Docker, it wraps a Docker basically version of it, right? Um, so you can just download this SD card image and flash it using Raspberry Pi Imager. You can also run a, a setup script, the shell script that runs and you know on the command line. You can also install things manually. Um, and so um, in the guide there, I mentioned a couple different options, but if you go straight to the Magic Mirror setup guide, that's probably your best bet for you know looking at all the different options that are available. Um, I'd say for this one, there are three different things happening. There's the PyTop Seed software, which is necessary for things like brightness, you know, and actually controlling, you know, like a little bit better interfacing between the Pi hardware and the display. Then there's the uh, Google AIY Voice Kit software that's running that actually turns it into a Google Home. And there's the um, Magic Mirror software. And so you kind of have to think about which one, uh, if I loaded that image on there, would it be hard to load everything else? And so you kind of start with whatever the most complicated one is, which in this case was the AI voice kit because it's more finicky. Uh, is there a kit with everything I need for this mirror for the soldering challenge thinkers? Well, um, for there's actually no soldering required for any of the magic mirrors unless you want to do something really crazy with it. Um, I'd say the Pi Top Seed one that I'm showing you is you know this came out of like i actually did this project like a about two years ago a year and a half and i kind of updated it you know um if i was going to build one today i would probably just build just take a normal monitor and, and kind of just build something simple stick the raspberry pi on the back of it it connects with hdmi just like anything else so there's really no soldering needed uh, at all um yeah but as far as kits, I don't think there are any kits. You just need to order the different materials or whatever size monitor you have. You can order an exact piece of two-way mirror that size, which I mentioned in that guide uh, in the video. Um, so you don't have to cut that yourself, which can be a pain to do. Oh, that's, that's cool. So yeah. what, what sorts of things, so you have a lot of widgets through it. Do you get any advantages from it being a mirror? Or is that just kind of making it look cool? Um, it looks cool, and if you, you know, uh, if you want to look at yourself, I guess. <laughs> um, it mostly looks cool, and and I think that, I think there's something cool about, you know, bespoke objects in our house where yeah. this object serves this purpose. And if it's a mirror on your wall that shows you information, it's a lot better than just uh, a TV on the wall that sometimes shows you information and sometimes you're using it to watch TV, uh, unless maybe. The TV had a mirror-like surface that, when it's off, it showed this kind of stuff, and that would be another story. So, can you have you tried watching video through it? How how is that experience? Um, it depends on how bright it is in the room. Um, this this mirror actually gets pretty bright. I just um, last again uh, my SD card got corrupted, and last night I said, okay, I better. I actually packed it away as I was moving stuff around, and I thought I better check this thing before I, you know. So last night I, I went to connect it and the SD card, even though it had been off for so long, got corrupted somehow. So I don't know if like a bit of something got in there, but the SD card was shot. And so I had to reinstall everything and I didn't have enough time to install like the, the seed software. And there's a little bit of funkiness where they've changed their software library completely. And uh, I updated the guide, but it's, um, you know, there was some complexity, I didn't have time. So usually this is a lot brighter when you're actually looking at it right now. And you can see in the normal video, it's a lot brighter. Um, and the monitor, I have another one in the house that's just a wooden monitor um, with like a vertical LED screen behind it. And that one um, is a lot brighter. And if you watch video through it, if it's pretty dim in the room, you can actually see it really well, surprisingly well. Huh. So it's not, that would that'd be really interesting to try. I think it would, uh, it would be fascinating. Granted, it's probably not the intended use is to watch videos through it, but never, right. nevertheless, <laughs> we always ask if you can, not if you I should. Out. 
Well, how about this? If you had a video widget where when it actually started playing, it called some smart house device to dim the lights. Yeah. Then there you go. Then your lights would automatically dim. You could see it better. And then when it stops playing, they can go back up. Maybe something like that. That's, That's cool. How you do yeah. It. No, I mean, I just, I would just think that, and I don't know if you can hide a camera behind it effectively. It would be interest. It would be an interesting like video conference type of situation if you, you Ooh, know, wow. asked it to make a call, like call grandma or something, and you, you know, sure, and then you could do it. Because uh, I know we know there's Google Assistant. There's a couple of Google Assistant devices that have screens and can do video calls, uh, but turning a mirror into one, I think that would, where you can yeah. calls would be cool. I think that would be cool um, if you have even to take an existing Google Home, as long as you can do a black background behind it, you know, to have just a little mirror material over it. And there's another um, widget that's really popular, which is you just have a camera that you hook up to your Pi, like whatever camera you want. And then it'll do, um, it'll use OpenCV to do facial recognition. So if it's your wife or your husband or girlfriend or whatever, it'll change the mirror to their dashboard. So when you're getting ready, but you what you have to do that day on your calendar, um, or that's maybe nice. it just disappears if it's not you. Ooh, that's that's nice. Yeah, uh, I I agree with Jim uh, with Jim CKD though. It would be cool if somebody made made a kit where you where it was more like the one you have. I think is more of a desktop setup. Whereas I think there's probably people want to hang it on the wall like a like a mirror. Yeah, that would. That would be a cool setup. So, Definitely. so uh, speaking of cool setups, Ash, you have uh, you have some projects that people have been doing this month that have been really impressive. It's true. For those of you watching who aren't familiar with what I do, every week I cover Raspberry Pi projects from viewers and listeners like you. And every month I will I select ten of them for our list of best Raspberry Pi projects. You can find the full list on tomshardware.com, but here are a few really cool ones that stood out and I just had to share them with you guys. So first, let me get my screen swapped over and I'm gonna read the headlines for these because we have some people listening that don't see what I see and I want them to get the impression of what these projects are for. So first up, it says Maker uses Raspberry Pi to control LEDs with his mind. And it's exactly what it sounds like. He's using a sensor that's on his forehead and the data is interpreted by the Raspberry Pi. And you can see the Python script in this uh, uh, featured image. And whenever he blinks, it triggers something in his brainwaves that's detectable by this Python script. And he can effectively blink once to go through a list of LEDs. And when he finds the one he wants to illuminate, he can blink twice and that one will stay on. So that's just incredible. If you can control LEDs, imagine what else you could control your magic mirrors, right, Zach? blink at it. <laughs> so that, that's one project I thought was really cool. I had to show you guys. Next. This, this is kind of a project. This is more like a workaround that someone developed for an existing project. It says developer finds eight extra GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 4. And basically this guy needed to use a fan on his Raspberry Pi, but didn't have enough room with the GPIO to attach it and power it and everything. Um, so he was he was able to access one of the GPIOs that's reserved for the camera module. So as long as the fan is attached to this particular pin, he won't be able to use the camera. But if you don't need it, then that's one extra pin that you have access to and you can attach your hat or whatever. And apparently there's uh, seven more. So you really, if that sounds exciting, you should really read into what he did because there's apparently a lot of other hardware you can sacrifice to expand for other things, devices, modules you want to attach. That was just too cool to not mention to you guys. Well, it'd be cool uh, if um, Adafruit or Pimeroni, any of those guys are watching, make an expansion cable that goes from that, from the camera the rib or from the, the ribbon cable there to uh, a breakout board so we can nice. access them easier without soldering and then, you know, publish. Yeah, that would be, that would be a great a idea. idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a great idea. I, I impressed my nine-year-old with it with this because sometimes we have trouble getting him to finish eating his food, and he, he'll just be sitting there daydreaming. I'll say, "Listen, I, I got to tell you something cool. We 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 found out about Raspberry Pi. It's like, what? I'll have two more bites. I'll tell you. There's eight extra GPIO pins. <laughs> You're like, really? There. That is so sweet that it gets him excited. That is so precious. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. All right, guys. One more. One more project, and then. 
all you guys watching that are excited are gonna have to go read the full list to see what else is out there because there's a lot of cool ones. Like for real, like where everything's going on this summer, everybody's at home, people are just making some awesome stuff on the Raspberry Pi. So this is a really good time for us to look through projects. Okay, this one is one that I kind of want myself. This guy turned a Nerf gun into a working controller, like the kind that you would point and pull the trigger like on a, a House of the Dead or something, right? And it uses a Raspberry Pi to pull it off. And he actually got it to work on a Call of Duty. So it, it's not just a proof of concept, like he, he actually used it in game. And I just thought that was, that was a neat crossover of interests. Oh, that's awesome. So what do you guys think? Do, you, do, do these projects get you excited? Do you want to make any of them? I hope he disabled the spring just in case somebody puts a dart in it and you shoot. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe leave that in as a surprise. Yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of surprise we want. <laughs> um, and so Les, you had a project you were also working on, right? Indeed, yes. As we know, it's uh, May the 4th today. And it's happy Star Wars Day to everyone watching and listening. Back I've at got... you. Thank you very much. I have the Jar Jar Binks t-shirt on for that, but it's just slightly out of shot. Um, I thought I'd make something a bit fun, so I'm, I'm, I'm riffing on this. This is a project I started a year ago for some kids I was working with. And kids are excited about Star Wars, just like this grown adult allegedly is. <laughs> and they wanted to know who would they be in Star Wars, what character would they be? So we made a scratch game. And here's the game. You can see on the right-hand side of the screen, it's circling through um, a big number of Star Wars characters mainly from The Force Awakens. And you can see me, and you can see the project in front of me here. Scratch is running on the Scratch website, and it's been programmed to react to a button press. If I press stop on here now, I am Kylo Ren, which isn't a good look, really. <laughs> um, I can press stop, and it's cool. But I can use the Force, and I can actually control this with just my mind and a wave of my hands. If I just do this now, I'm still Kylo Ren. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not pressing any buttons. I'm moving the mouse away now. Well, I'm the still... force is strong with that one. <laughs> wow, I am dark side. <laughs> so really what's happening is this little a bit in front of you here is the Maker Pi Pico, uh, which I've been playing around with for weeks now. It's a great little board. We reviewed it. Fantastic. It's $10, and it breaks out everything that you need for messing around with a Pico. And I've got this little sensor here. This is an obstacle sensor. It's passive infrared, has two states, off and on. And when I move my hand across, it changes the state from off, sorry, to on to off, and that triggers the board to react and behave like a USB keyboard. And that's programmed in CircuitPython. And that code is these 22 lines of code here, which are mainly imports. Um, I just say, act like a USB keyboard. And when you see the sensor value drop to false, press the space key, which in turn makes the game stop. So if I go back over to the game now, I'll wave a hand over. I'm Kylo Ren again, <laughs> but a different one this time. And yeah, good bit of fun for Star Wars. I thought I'd make a little game and just add a little bit of action with Circuit Python and the Make a Pi Pico. That is fantastic and very on point for May 4th. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool, and it seems like it has a lot of practical applications, too. It's a CalRN detector, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Evan, you're muted. If you have an emo person with a mask coming into your house, then you know it's Kylo Ren. <laughs> uh, speak, uh, speaking of projects, uh, my son and I have got to a point of almost – completion. I mean, there's more that we can add. Is any project ever really complete? Zach's working on a reworking on a magic mirror project that you've been working on for a while. So, uh, but we've reached somewhat of a point of completion on this robot that we were just building. And I wanted to show you how it works in the code. So this is completely from scratch, not a kit. Um, we, we bought a metallic chassis from Adafruit, which is, uh, which was about $20. We got some TT TT motors, uh, which are basic DC motors and and wheels. Uh, we have a Raspberry Pi four, and we have the most important element here, which I think I flashed on last week's show, which is the Thunderboard from Pi Borg, which is a really really great hat because it's one of the very few hats 
that you can actually use to power at motors and the Pi at the same time off of any power source that's like between seven and I think 25 volts. So we have it hooked up here to a pack of six AA batteries that's over here. Uh, and we have it also hooked up to a no IR, a noir, I guess, camera here. And uh, so what, we, what we've done is it's just so simple to once you have the right parts to make an interface that are work on both mobile and uh and desktop so i'll just show you really quickly um up here we have the interface for up here we have the interface for the um is it working it, um we have the interface for it and it may have rebooted itself. One of the problems I'm having with this is if I jostle it at all, it gets a little, it gets, uh, I need to figure out how to keep the wires from like cutting the power when it gets and rebooting when it gets jostled. But, uh, so I'm looking up at it here. Um, I guess I can't, I guess I gotta move it back. Um, okay. So anyway, so if I use my um, use this use the controls I just showed you, then I can make it actually drive, stop, back, left, right, uh, etc. Because it's um, because of how of how uh, it works. Now it's all being done using using Flask which I think we've talked about before on the show is just like the simplest, simplest way to, to make an interface that controls something with Python. So if I'm here and I look at my open up, I'm on the device itself, open up my Thani, you can see that the main app here is just called app PY. It uses about 27 lines of code to tell it basically you know from the web browser what what to do and then there's a library which my son created i mean it comes with a library for thunderborg uh but he created a separate library for for this robot which he calls purple bot which just kind of makes it just a little bit easier to um to use that here just says like if you're you know to set the motors to to go at a certain speed or or whatever um, but bottom line is the code was the easiest part. Um, the code was the easiest part by far. So, um, really easy to create your own robot. I think the, the key element is making sure you have the right hat for your, the motors and the power source. Oh, really cool. Photos to little man for building his own library for that. That's really cool. Yeah, he wanted to build a library. He wasn't happy to just use the Thunderborg li library, which hasn't been updated in a few years. I should I should know, uh, but it's it's. I've been frustrated. We've been frustrated by the the hat selection that's out there because a lot of the motor hats that we found, like the Adafruit motor hat, motor hat or whatever, don't power the Pi. Also, so you have to bring have a separate battery for the Pi than you have for the motors, and that's very annoying. I mean, I guess maybe, although on the other hand, maybe we wouldn't have the problem we're having now with it when it gets jostled through booting. So maybe that's, maybe that's why people do it, but I, I don't know how you manage to fit two batteries on a normal robot chassis. It's, it's also annoying because there aren't a lot of five volt, uh, high power output batteries on the market. You know, you're kind of expected to use like a giant lipo battery that's used for like a drone or something, and then use a bulk converter to turn it down to five volts. And so that makes it even harder to to like find ones that can output it, not just have the capacity to run a Pi, but like enough current, right, to, uh, being output. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that I've had that sort of worked this way, and it's a little bit trashed right now, but I'll just show it for the heck of it, is the uh, STS Pi from Pimeroni, which the solution there is uh, one of the other hats that actually sort of solves this problem is the Pimeroni, Pimeroni Explorer hat which can do two GC motors off of the hat. So if you power the Pi, you're powering the motors. Uh, but, you know, how do you fit a battery on it? You have to use a, um, 
a phone battery basically and there's room in the chassis they give you for the world's smallest smallest round phone battery that only does i think one amp so it has five volts but one amp so if you try to do anything more than the minimum on it it, it gives you the, the little lightning bolt symbol saying you don't have enough enough juice and is that even enough for the, is that even enough for like the pi zero to run uh oh yeah i mean i have a pi four on here and it runs but oh, wow. so it, it uh, to give them credit like it a pi four uh and and with, even with these motors and a camera it does work but if you start to do something like trying to do object recognition, like mm. open CV or whatever, I guess that makes it use more more amperage and that's when it starts to give problems. So, uh, but it actually, it actually does work. I just, I don't like, I know a lot, I don't like having to power the Pi off of a phone battery. I find that annoying. Uh, so I wish there were more and better solutions for that, but, uh, I want to thank everybody here. Uh, thank everyone for tuning in today, especially thank Zach for joining us. Please check out his site at howchew.com. We have a link in the description of this video that shows you exactly the article uh, that you can go to on, on how to about the magic mirror. It, it's it, exceptional. Yes, <laughs> it, looks, it looks awesome. Uh, as always, you can find us here at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. British time on Tuesdays. And we will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.